Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and some new details have come out about Star Wars Episode 7, just like those leaked Tatooine pictures. It's mostly about the main Luke Skywalker type character, or the character that's going to get Luke Skywalker's arc from the original trilogy, you know, introduce us to this new Star Wars universe. There's also a few new details about some classic characters that are coming back, but if you're finding me for the first time, I'm just doing Star Wars bonus videos until Rebels gets here in the fall. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. Feel free to leave me suggestions for any, you know, bonus videos or topics that you want to talk about specifically. So the most important stuff, John Boyega's character is supposed to be the person the story uses to introduce us to the new J.J. Abrams Disney Star Wars universe. He's getting that Luke Skywalker character arc or something similar to that. So what does that mean? Well, you remember back in episode four where Luke Skywalker was living in the middle of nowhere, Tatooine, barely knew anything about the Galactic Civil War, only had passing knowledge of the Empire and the Rebellion, and definitely was not a Jedi yet. That's supposed to be John Boyega's character, just a totally normal kid who gets swept up into this big galaxy. He was part of that group of people filming early scenes on those Tatooine sets a couple of weeks ago. So at the very least, it confirms a few things. The rumors are is that his character development will be very similar to Luke Skywalker's. So he's not going to be a Jedi or even a Padawan at the beginning, but he'll slowly develop as the sequels come. As for actual Jedi, we don't know exactly what some of the other characters are playing, but we do know that Luke Skywalker is in the movie as a real life person. He's been growing his Obi-Wan Kenobi Jedi beard, so he's probably going to be the spiritual leader, at least for the good guys in the movie. Because of the similar character arc with John Boyega's character, I'm thinking that Luke Skywalker himself might follow a modified version of Obi-Wan's character arc in the original trilogy. So you kind of see what J.J. Abrams and Disney are doing. They're honoring those classic films by using the same film camera. They're not doing digital. They're using real life creatures in the same sets and they're going to follow some of the same character beats. I don't expect them to just cut and paste the plot, but a really safe way to appease super fans would be to do a Battlestar Galactica thing where all the characters realize that all these things have happened before and they will happen again. If you're not familiar with the plot of Ronald D. Moore's Battlestar Galactica, feel free to ask for clarification in the comments. More characters though. I have seen rumors about Lupita being Obi-Wan Kenobi's granddaughter. I think it would be fine, but it would be a huge departure from the movie canon. At no point in any of George Lucas's films did Obi-Wan have any kind of romance with anyone. So I would be really curious to see where that granddaughter came from. But remember, if J.J. Abrams could reboot the continuity of the Star Trek universe, he could do it in the Star Wars universe too. So prepare yourself for him to change some of the story from the original trilogy. It might happen. The primary antagonist initially is supposed to be a female Sith character. The best theories I've seen since last week is that it will be Gwendolyn Christie. It's going to be a female and a main cast member. And how many women have they cast in this movie so far? Practically none, aside from Leia. And no, I'm pretty sure that Leia is not going to be the Sith warrior in this movie. But would that not be crazy? I just keep remembering this interview Gwendolyn Christie did at the beginning of Game of Thrones season 4, where she said she had to bite someone's ear off in a scene, and they just laughed at how ridiculous and violent it was. I'm wondering if the Star Wars people saw that and said, hmm, she would make an excellent Sith warrior. Using a really compelling female villain is something that the Clone Wars did with Asajj Ventress, but think about Episode 7 using someone that's a closer analog to Darth Vader. Gwendolyn Christie does look like she's about the same size as David Prowse, you know, the guy that actually stepped into that Darth Vader costume. So it's totally plausible that she could be that Sith warrior, but I don't think they'd make her wear a mask, even if they did want her to be like a Darth Vader type character. Speaking of villains, if you remember the original trilogy in the progression of evil, we started out with Darth Vader being like the main villain in the first movie and most of the second, and then they kind of introduced the Emperor. Do not be surprised if we don't find out who the Sith Master is until the second Star Wars film. Just looking at the casting sheet, my eyes dart to Max von Sydow just because he looks like a villain, but that's kind of an obvious move, so feel free to suggest any other possibilities. They will cast more new people whenever we get to that second film, episode 8, so we might not even see the Sith Master's face in this first movie. The only other new things that we've learned about the movie are that despite it being 30 years after Return of the Jedi, there will be no New Republic. That doesn't mean the Empire is still going strong, but the New Republic was something that evolved in the expanded universe, so I'm not surprised that they're not going to use it. The last thing is spin-off related, so Boba Fett's armor was spotted on set, or Mandalorian armor, however you want to think about it, but Boba Fett himself was not seen. No confirmation on what role he'll play in the first film, but he is in the new trilogy. It's likely that he'll just be teased in that first film, and then they might use a post credit scene with him to tease the first spinoff. Disney hasn't confirmed what that first spinoff is going to be, but don't be surprised if they wait to tell us until Episode 7 comes out just to maintain a certain element of surprise. But because Disney owns both Star Wars and Marvel right now, 
Totally expect to get that post credits treatment where you tease each next film at the end of the previous film. So let me know in the comments, what do you think about Brienne becoming like a big new Darth Vader Sith warrior? And what do you think about Lupita becoming Obi-Wan's granddaughter? Would you be upset that they're changing the original canon? I think I'd probably be able to live with it. It's happened to so many other franchises that if they think that it's going to make the story better, then I want them to try it. But J.J. Abrams has already fired Michael Arndt, the person who wrote that first draft of Episode 7, and he wasn't a bad writer. He was the guy who wrote Toy Story 3, which is actually a really good movie. So it sounds like they've been having a lot of script problems in the last year. So whatever they end up deciding on, hopefully it's for the best. So my next Star Wars bonus video is either going to be plot related for Episode 7, depending on what we learn in the next week, or it's just going to be one of my favorite Expanded Universe stories. Be sure to subscribe to get it. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. Billy D. Williams confirmed that he's going to be part of the new Rebels cartoon as Lando Calrissian. He didn't say how many episodes he's going to be in, but I'm guessing that he's just going to be a recurring guest character. So right now, click here to learn more about Star Wars Episode 7 and click here to learn more about Avengers 2. I'm actually working on a special new video for that tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. High fives.